Good morning, everyone. Happy fall break. We're so excited that you're joining us for worship today. We're going to kick it off as we always do with some great music. Why don't you stand and join us as we sing together? Oh 
Sing, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Oh, this is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You lay down your life. Eternal God, unchanging. Eternal God, unchanging, mysterious and unknown. Your boundless love, unfailing in grace and mercy shown. Bright seraphim in ceaseless flight. Around your glorious throne, they raise their voices day and night in praise to you alone. Hallelujah! Glory be to our great God. Hallelujah!
and every flying bird let every mountain every field and valley of the earth let all the moons and all the stars in all the universe you to turn and pass the peace of Christ to those around you. But he brought me in, oh, his love for me, oh, his love.
there's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Amen. Amen. We invite you now to have a seat and enjoy this scripture that we read. Hi, I'm Don Spence. This week's scripture reading is John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5, 14 and 18. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was with God in the beginning. Everything came into being through the Word, and without the Word nothing came into being. What came into being through the Word was light, and the life was the light for all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness doesn't extinguish the light. The Word became flesh and made His home among us. We have seen His glory, glory like that of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. No one has ever seen God. God, the only Son, who is at the Father's side, has made God known to us. We are thankful for the gift of Scripture. Amen. make sure I'm on. Yep, there we go. Good morning. So glad that you all are here at Contemporary Worship, and in spite of fall break, we are here together worshiping God and being in one another's presence, and we are so thankful for your presence this morning. Well, it has been quite a journey over the past few weeks as we have explored what it means to free Jesus. Now, I brought my God box back today. For those of you who are here the very first week of the series, we talked about the ways that we put God in a box, right? Some of those maybe preconceived notions or the things that we learned about God over the years that maybe you just box God in when really we don't know completely who or what God is, but we tend to throw God in a box sometimes. So we are to, to free God and free Jesus from all of those, maybe some negative connotations that we've associated. And so we've explored Jesus as friend, as teacher, Savior, way, and Lord, and today, presence. And in the midst of that, I've been able to share with you all a little more of my faith journey as I made the change years ago from Judaism to Christianity. And I've invited you all to wrestle along with me in answering these questions about who Jesus is. And we've been through this process of rediscovering him as each of these pieces. Now, in this process, I hope that we've been able to set aside any preconceived notions of Jesus that may not have been helpful to us, the things that we have put in that, that box, or any negative images of who he is. Because so many people today, especially those from younger generations, are being exposed to a Jesus that many of us would not recognize today. Jesus, instead of friend, teacher, savior, way, or Lord, has been painted as judgmental, intolerant, hypocritical, or even wrathful. So Jesus needs to be freed once again from any of these boxes, any of these labels, and known for who he truly was and is to each of us today and to our faith communities. And so today we end our series with reflecting upon Jesus as presence. He is all of these things that we have talked about and so much more. But how do we then experience his presence in our lives? And how do we open our eyes and lives to this presence so that it changes the way the, that we see and do things? As I ventured into discovering for myself who Jesus was, I turned to a lot of books conversations with people, and long nights of poring over scriptures. I got to the point of feeling frustrated and restless with the whole thing, even to the point of giving up. But then I experienced Jesus as presence. I was in Mexico on a mission trip with a youth group. So here I was, a Jewish girl on a mission trip with a bunch of Christian teenagers. I had no idea what I believed. I was just there, you know. One night, I was so confused and upset that I burst into tears and felt more alone than I had in a long time. 
Why couldn't God just give me an answer? Why couldn't God just tell me what I should believe, what I should do? So I went to bed that night feeling that I would never find what I had been seeking, that I should give it all up and just go on with my life and not think about God at all. But in the morning when I woke up, I had a sense of peace come over me like I never felt before. At breakfast that morning, a friend asked me how I, I was doing, and I told him about my unexplainable sense of peace. He simply smiled and said, Good, I'm glad to hear that, because a group of us prayed for you last night. We prayed that God would send you a sense of peace and calm and would be with you. I was stunned. This was the first time that I had known anyone to pray specifically for me. And it was also the first time that I truly felt God's presence in my life. And it was that kind of peace that passes all understanding that we hear about, but we rarely experience for ourselves a lot of times. It was then that I realized that I had experienced the presence of Jesus for the first time. For me, it was this presence that opened the door to having a relationship with him as friend, as teacher, savior, lord, and way. And once I felt that sense of presence, I was able to look back and realize that Jesus had been there with me all along, a constant presence in my explorations. Now, writer Anne Lamott, in her book, Traveling Mercies, shares her story of how she came to faith through a series of intense life experiences. After years of dependency on drugs and alcohol to escape the difficulties of life, she found herself in the depths of her own hell. She was drunk, on drugs, and alone on one particular night. Shaky, scared, and sick, she finally was sobering up and crawled into bed, and after a while, felt a presence in the room with her, hunkered down in the corner. She explains that the feeling was so real that she actually turned on a light for a moment to make sure that nobody was there. But after a while, in the dark again, she knew beyond a doubt that the presence was Jesus. And she was appalled. Why? Because, she thought, she could not imagine what her friends would think if she became a Christian, or how she would handle it herself based on the Christians that she knew. Again, that God box. She simply could not allow for that to happen. She screamed out into the darkness to the wall, I would rather die. But yet she felt Jesus there on his haunches in the corner, watching with patience and love. She closed her eyes, but that didn't help because that was not what she was seeing him with. And later she writes that the presence remained with her and she felt it as if it was following her around like a little cat, refusing to leave. Over time, she discovered that if she said hello to God, she would feel God say hello back. Sometimes she wadded up a tissue and held it tightly so that she felt as, she, as if she were walking hand in hand with God. In Judaism, there is this concept of Shekinah, Shekinah, which is actually a feminine Hebrew term. It is the feminine presence of God descending to earth and dwelling among human beings. It is quite possible that this is how Jesus' first followers experienced his presence, not with philosophical precision, but as a person inhabited by Shekinah. It is possible that they believed him to be the dwelling place of God. And if this was the case, then there was no real conflict between his followers of bearing the mystery of the sacred and being fully human. That could be who Jesus was and still is. Jesus is the presence, the wisdom, the divine dwelling with us here and now. The word became flesh and lived among us, says the opening of John's gospel. Jesus had a body. The presence of God, the image of the invisible God, is embodied in Jesus of Nazareth. 
that is the heart of our faith in the incarnation, perhaps this Shekinah. Jesus cared so much about bodies that he became one. He healed bodies, he touched them, and even raised them from the dead. Jesus is in the business of redeeming and transforming bodies, even ours. If this is the case, why do we struggle so much with our bodies? As a teenage girl, and even now as an adult, I struggle with body image and the media and our world's obsession with presenting the ideal, ideal image, right? The church has spent centuries shaming female bodies, trying to hide them and trying to control them. Yet, Jesus had a body. Bodies are sacred. Bodies are also messy, ever-changing, and what makes us who we are as human beings. We mistreat our own bodies and the bodies of others. The indwelling of the Spirit is damaged often by mishandling of ourselves and others. And we struggle with how to see ourselves in the mirror. But the embodiment of Jesus should tell us otherwise. Because Jesus became a body and had a body, the indwelling of the presence of God, we too share in this sacred connection. Our bodies are meant for connection. They're meant to experience the presence of God, the one who became present with us. Jesus' presence teaches us about the importance of being present with others. The gift of presence is oftentimes the most precious one that we can give. In Judaism, there is a tradition called sitting shiva. When a family loses a loved one, the faith community gathers around them by simply coming to their home and sitting with them. No casseroles required. No fancy words required. Just simply showing up and being a presence. In this way, each person represents the presence of God with the grieving family. Sometimes it is enough that someone just sits with us for a while. In Jesus, we find a constant presence. A presence who is sitting Shiva with us reminding us that we are not alone. I found this to be true often when I was a brand new mother. My son did not sleep well, and we had many, many late nights. Oftentimes I found myself at my wit's end. I was tired, frustrated, and feeling hopeless. Then one night an image popped into my mind, and it was so vivid that I did a Google search to see if such an image had been created before. Those of you who are artists, maybe you can think about creating one for me. It was an image of Jesus placing his hands on my shoulders as a young mother, feeling like I had no idea what I was doing. Jesus standing over the crib with me as I tried to soothe a screaming child. Jesus present with me in the darkest of nights, soothing my weary soul. It is true that Jesus often surprises us by showing up where we do not expect him. He shows up in the most ordinary moments as well as the sacred ones. He shows up by redirecting our attention, our attention to others and to scripture and theologies we have ignored, perhaps or by introducing questions that we would rather avoid. Jesus has become present with us, with the world, in ways that we never expected. He shows up when pure joy fills our souls. He shows up in the dark of the night with a new mom. And he shows up in those dark moments when we feel that all hope is lost. One of my favorite movies is Patch Adams. Anybody seen it? A few? Great movie, great movie. Robin Williams is the star of the movie, and he plays a doctor who has a rather unconventional way of caring for his patients. 
And he brings others alongside him to care for and nurture his, his patients through humor and friendship. But tragically, Patch's girlfriend is murdered by a patient who struggles with mental health challenges. So in this scene that we're about to watch, Patch wrestles with his grief and the presence of God. He questions it. And let's take a look at what he discovers. So what now, huh? What do you want from me? Yeah, I could do it. We both know you wouldn't stop me. So answer me, please. Tell me what you're doing. Okay, let's look at the logic. You create man. Man suffers enormous amounts of pain. Man dies. <laughs> Maybe you should have had just a few more brainstorming sessions prior to creation. You rested on the seventh day. Maybe you should have spent that day on compassion. In my own search, in my own questioning, in my faith, Jesus made God more present to me. No longer did God feel so disconnected or far away. No longer did God feel like something I could not reach. God in Jesus made God's presence more real to me than I could have ever imagined. Perhaps in the darkest of moments, perhaps in the form of a beautiful butterfly. Because if we are willing to take a closer look at life's circumstances, people around us and our situations, we might just find the presence of Jesus there. We only have to open our eyes and our lives to the possibilities of seeing him at work. And sometimes Jesus forces his way in anyway. And that is the beauty of the persistent grace of God. Where is Jesus? Right here. We stand in the presence of our friend, teacher, Savior, way, and Lord. And what a blessing that is. My prayer for each of us is that we will keep discovering over and over again who and what Jesus is for our lives. May it be like opening a precious gift over and over again. And may we not forget to pass that gift on to others. In this time, I'll invite you to pray with me, with each other, to experience God's presence among us. We'll start with a time of silence, then a prayer, and then we'll lift up the Lord's Prayer together. Let us pray. Holy 
Holy God, surround us with your presence. Lord, let us know that you are here. Remind us, O oh God, that you sit Shiva with us, that you take us on, whether life is ordinary or extraordinary, whether it is joyful or full of anxiety or pain. We thank you, God, that your presence permeates each and every part of our lives, whether or not we, real, we realize it. And when we struggle to understand the ways that you work, O oh Lord, challenge us to see beyond. Call us into your presence in new and challenging ways that we might continue to love and serve you and in turn to love and serve someone else. Today, oh God, we bring with us everything that is weighing on our lives and our hearts. We lift to you the joys that surround us for the changing of the seasons, for the colors, and for the patterns of our lives that remind us perhaps that little things are sacred. We give you thanks for the joy of friendships, families, communities doing your work, and people that show and give love. And Lord, today we also bring with us that which weighs on us. Perhaps we bring today our stresses, our pains, or our, our anxieties, busy calendars, and overwhelming schedules. But even in those parts, O oh Lord, remind us of your presence that we are not alone. And taking one day at a time, you walk with us. We take this moment to lift up those in our lives, in our church, who are grieving the loss of a loved one, who are struggling with health concerns, who are recovering, who are feeling loneliness. We lift up our schools, our students, those who are traveling, and we pray for our church that in the midst of this unknown season, we'll continue to be a light in this world and to reach others in the name of Jesus. Send your spirit to renew us, O oh God, to revive us and restore us. We may continue our journey here and now. In this, we lift up and we ask in the name of Jesus, who teaches us to pray by saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. is calling Have you come to the end of yourself Do you thirst for a drink from the well Jesus is calling Oh come to 
is set, the people are ready, and we are so thankful for the opportunity to be here today to experience the presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and we are blessed that we serve a God that interacts with us in so many different ways, when we need a friend, when we need a Lord, when we need a Savior, a teacher, a way. God is there. God is ready. We need only ask. And in all of those things, we experience the presence of our God. Here in the Methodist Church, we believe in an open table, which means you don't have to be a member of this church or any church to join with us in Holy Communion. The only thing we ask is that you desire a deeper relationship with God. You can approach the altar, you can grab yourself a communion cup and take it back to your seat. You can bring it up, you can come and kneel, light a candle, say a prayer, 
Take your time. This is for you. The time is all you need. Will you pray with me? God, we do thank you so much for the opportunity to come and worship today. We thank you that your table is open, that your table is always set and ready for us to approach you and experience your presence. God, we just ask today, as we do come to the altar, God, that you would just fill us with you, that we would experience your love and your grace and your mercy and your presence today. And we ask, as we do each week, that you make these gifts of food and drink for us to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Because he had a body. He walked among us offering us a new way, a better way, a life that we can experience together. We thank you for this opportunity again, and we pray this all in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The table is open, friends. Come. you to stand and join us as we close our worship.
have been released. You are here with us. You are here with us. We are slaves no more. Freedom is our hope. Never looking back, Jesus, you are Lord. We give all to you. We give all to you. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord Chains are broken, eyes are open, Christ is with us, Christ is with us. Ooh, the sun is free. The sun is free, he is free indeed. All our sin is gone, we have been redeemed. Jesus paid it all, Jesus paid it all. Where the Spirit of the Lord. for joining us today. We hope you have a wonderful week. We invite you now to go seeking the presence of a living God. Go in peace.